All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to be looking at the Midas M32 and Behringer X32, which is super interesting because Behringer also makes the Midas M32. So it's a Behringer Midas M32 versus a Behringer Behringer X32, because Behringer bought Midas, a premium console manufacturer out of England, and has put out two competing consoles at different price points. Uh, this is in the under $3,000 range, $2,500 or so, $2,600, and this is the higher than $4,000, up in the $4,000 range. So almost 50%-ish more for this one, but they have exactly the same interface, same software, uh, different knob qualities, little stuff is different. The form factor is different, the screen is more, kind of tilted. This one I can see while I'm sitting down. It's kind of nice. Um, there's a lot of smart people out there that are really good at testing stuff with high quality, expensive equipment and creating all kinds of specifications, charts, graphs, distortion, phase, all kinds of measurements. Now I can do some of that stuff. I don't consider myself a super skilled expert at it, but I can do it. Um, but that's not what I'm going to do. Um, there are also a lot of people out there that have very strong opinions and they will put out information and make strong statements like there are differences between them and these are those differences and they make a huge difference and the sound is this and the sound is that. Um, but no real backup either, just kind of these strong opinions based in something they read or looking at um, maybe a picture of the inside. Um, I believe the preamps are different. I've seen pictures that show they're different, but how different are they? So I'm gonna approach this from a different angle, somewhere in between those two. I'm not gonna go super specky, and I'm not gonna do super opinion. I'm just gonna test it out and see what is audible, what we can hear, and then you can determine whether or not that's relevant for your application. Now, the other video I did, uh, when I took a first look, I did notice the XLR connectors were different. Uh, these have all nitric connectors. You can tell by a little circle with an N and a T um, on the metal ta push tab of the female connectors. And you can look down inside the male connectors and you see they're all nitric um, branded. This has nitric connectors, maybe four of them. The Ethercons in the back, the lamp, four pin lamp connector, and maybe another one or two back there. All the rest are an imitation. They actually have a logo that looks similar to a nitric, but not a nitric. Um, I believe the same goes true for the quarter inches. There's definitely a difference between the quarter inches. I haven't opened it up and looked to make sure they're nitric on this one, um, but there is a difference. However, that matters uh, for you. I don't know, it definitely raises the cost uh, to build it. Um, so I've got the two consoles set up here, test rig. I've got a pink noise generator here, my handy dandy sound bullet, awesome piece. Um, I've got a um, tone generator here, um, frequency synth that I can just go like 10 millivolts at 500 hertz. And um, there we have it, although it put 5,500 hertz in. Um, and I've got this cool Duros meter here, which has got uh, one dB accuracy. Um, and I've got a music player here that um, I can play music on. Um, and I'm recording everything on this little TIAC recorder here for the uh, video, so you'll be able to hear what the consoles are actually doing. Now right now I've got the console set up for a, what I call the cancel cancel noise test. And, oh, let me preface this by saying, um, some of these differences were surprisingly less than I expected. And I found at least one that was surprisingly more than expected. Things were not quite what I thought they were gonna be. Um, okay, so I've got this, um, those three noise sources running into a Sound Tools mic switcher, an ABC switcher. So this should be tone, that's uh, pink noise, and that's music. And I can send it to 
both consoles. It's going in a bunch of Y adapters so that both consoles are seeing two versions of the same signal, all four versions of the same, two t uh, instances of the same signal. Um, channel faders one to eight are seeing, they're all digitally linked together. Single input drives the eight, first eight faders. And nine through 16 is coming off the other side of the Y. And one through eight and nine through 16, identical everything, all, every dB, every 10th of a dB is set identically on both consoles. Um, and so that one signal hits those four places. Now what I can do is um, these null tests, I can start to use the consoles against each other and against themselves. So I've got channel one taking that signal with a very high gain. And let me mute that, unmute that. And we should hear the pink. Uh, very high gain and a low fader. And I've got channel nine with a low gain and a high fader. So channel one, we should be getting up into, or we can get up into, the um, preamp uh, overdrive in the preamp. So when I set this uh, generator here at minus 30, we're just, we're flashing just below clip there, the last LED before clip. So we're driving the preamp pretty hard on the first eight channels. I've only got one of them turned up. And then I've got this here. Ooh, let's see what I've got here. And that one there. Yes, I've got, um, Channel 9 with a polarity reverse with a very low gain and a high fader. So we can look at the preamp driven hard versus the preamp not driven hard and take those signals, sum them together for a null so that they're canceling each other out and hear what's left over. And what we should hear would be the difference between the two. It should be preamp coloration. So I'll put my headphones on. Let's give this a shot. So. Whoa, Dad, that's loud. So let's go ahead and turn that down. And there's our signal. And if I, that is the signal of the pink noise with the preamp driven hard and the fader down low. This is the preamp low, fader high. And I'm gonna go back and forth. High fader, low fader. Now yeah, really, it's hard to hear much difference. Let's go ahead and turn them both on out of polarity and see what happens. And we get cancellation. So now we can check that cancellation. If I go here and I go here, I can, this fader's at minus 20. I can change the fader. Oops, I went the wrong way. Okay. There we go. I'm altering. So if I bring the fader down, you can hear the cancellation goes away. So let's go ahead and gain that up. And that's what we hear. That's the part that's not being canceled out. So let's go ahead and try it here. You can hear the cancellation is just a bit off there. So that's the effect of driving the preamp hard. Now what I'm going to do now is drive it really hard into clipping and we'll hear what the clipping of the preamp sounds like. I'll turn it down. And you can hear this crunching sound. Um, now that's the preamp clipping. If I turn off, uh, it's going to blast if I, if I get rid of the cancellation. Um, all right, so there's the Midas preamp clipping um, with the initial signal canceled out using pink noise. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other console. And I've got this exact same thing set up here. I can try and picture. There is the sound of the um, X32 with the signal nulled out with pink noise. So there's the clipping sound. And then we'll go back to the Midas.
Okay, so you should be able to hear it. The actual crackling, that di digital distortion, is um, quite similar between the two. So running these um, consoles in the clip on the mic pre is an audible crackle that um, is very undesirable, and that's not gonna sound good at all. But you might have also noticed that there is a background hiss that is higher in level on the X32 than there is on the Midas. Let's try that again. Midas. X32. Let's make sure that's not um, my cancellation setup. Okay, um, I found that to be a little puzzling um, for two reasons. One, first of all, I expected there to be much more coloration caused by the mic pre um, driven hard. I was expecting this Midas mic pre to, even though they say they both have Midas mic pre, the Midas Pro mic pre, to be warmer or introduce some sort of... Um, delightful coloration that didn't happen on the Behringer or maybe not digitally clipped the same. But that's not what I found. I found that they both have this crappy clip sound that is the same. Don't overdrive these into the red. But what I did find is there's more noise in the X32. So the difference in preamp, at least with the pink noise test, doesn't seem to be in the warmth or coloration of the overdriven preamp, but it has it there's something to do with a lower noise floor. Um, so I went to investigate that further. But before we do, let's go ahead and try some music and some other signals with the same test. So let's go to music here. And I'm going to put this on this one. My friends um, uh, gave me this to play. Uh, Rio Rosa, better than nothing. Thank you. Um, let's do crank this up. So now, this is the Behringer with music in the null mode. And we're driving the preamps just below clip. And this is the residual sound that can't be canceled out through the null. And we'll do the Midas on this. thing okay so I mean I, the level changes a bit but the the actual coloration I'm, That's kind of interesting. We're able to get a better no on the um, Midas. Nice. So what we are seeing here, at least in this test, and it's not a super accurate test, I'm seeing that maybe there's a bit more coloration in the Behringer mic pre run hard and the Midas uh, Pro preamp is a little more linear. Um, 
we hear a, a lot of low end, so there's some warmth coming out. Now it's either the preamp getting thin or the preamp getting thick. I don't know the two. Um, let's try something else. Let's try um, something kind of fun. Now, taking this further, um, I can actually take the two consoles and cancel them again against each other. So if I mute here, and if I mute here, and then if I take these two out, we should now hear the difference between console one and console two. I'm actually driving out a polarity signal from the X32 and an in polarity signal from the uh, M32 into two channels here, and I'm summing them, uh, nulling them. And what we're hearing there is the difference between the two console mic pre's driven hard. And we can also go through and mute that and listen to the differences of the mic pre's driven soft. Um, I don't know how useful that test is, um, other than showing that there is a difference in the sound of the two consoles, um, and maybe not even a difference in the sound of the two consoles, but at least a difference in phase or timing that causes that. A slight shift in time coming out would cause that brightness to show up more than the low end, which requires a larger shift to cancel. Um, let's get back to that um, hiss or noise. So I messed around with this um, um, and I kept looking for that. I, tr I tried driving consoles up, preamps up. I, do I started um, doing everything I could to find that hiss and turns out I was able to find it. Let's go ahead and take a look at this noise issue that we ran into earlier. Um, now, we heard more noise coming from the X32 in the null mode. And theoretically, if the noise was the same on both channels, the noise should null out. And actually it did. I was actually not able to find the noise in the nulling or the preamp yet. Um, but what I did find was I took the output cable that's going into this console, the little console, and I hooked it up to this Duro's meter here and plugged it into one console and plugged it into the other. And what I noticed was, let's listen to it. So uh, I'm going to do a, a kind of an off-speed set on that where instead of me getting up and plugging them into the console right now, I'm just, I've got the gain set on this console at three quarter and I will bring up one console and then the other console. So let's bring up the Midas. And this is with the output muted. And now I'll bring up the Behringer. And as you can tell, there's a significant difference in level. Now, just to show you that it's not, even if these gains are a little off, I'll move that gain a little bit. I mean, it's not, um, there's more noise. And what's fascinating is it has nothing to do with the outputs being on. You can take an XLR cable, I can take an XLR cable, and plug it into any single output on the back, and it makes that same hiss, and I can plug it into any output on the back of the minus, and it makes less hiss. So they're just inherently noise floor output level. So I was like, okay, this is puzzling. Um, what does it say in the spec? And that's where it even got more interesting. So I've got the specs printed out here for the Midas and the Behringer. This is the Midas one, and this is the Behringer one. And let's go to the noise spec here, where it says output impedance is 75 ohms, 
on the X32 and 50 ohms on the Midas. Okay, so what? Doesn't make much of a difference. Um, the Mac non-clip output level is plus 21 here, dBU. The, oh, that's for the TRS and the TRS max output. We'll test that. Let's get into this noise. Okay, residual noise level. Residual noise level on the XLR and TRS on the X32 is minus 87 dBU, A-weighted. On the Midas, the residual noise level on the TRS, monitor out, XLR connectors. Oh wait, no, residual noise level output one through 16 XLR connectors is minus 85 at 22 hertz to 22K unweighted. So all the specs, the residual noise specs on the Midas are rated at minus 85 dBU, 22 to 20K unweighted. And on the X32, they only give one spec, which is XLR and TRS, which is minus 87 dBU A-weighted. So this actually, minus 87 is quieter than minus 83. 4 dB quieter. So if you just glanced at the two specs, you would think this console is 4 dB quieter. But this is unweighted and this is A-weighted. And if you're familiar with weighting, A-weighted rolls off all the low end. It focuses right around the speech. It's a speech-based sound. So a uh, measurement system. So if something went shh and Unweighted, the would be louder, and A-weighted, the would be quieter. And the one that goes would be louder. So what that's saying is that they're filtering out in that spec all of the low end in the noise spec. Um, and printing something that looks like it's quieter when it's actually noisier. Um, fascinating. Um, to see how spec sheets, how specs can be buried and manipulated by changing um, unweighted, just two letters to a single letter, un to a, um, and give the impression that um, this board is of the same output noise. Um, haven't found any other little gems like that. Uh, I did see some in there, but none that I've tested yet. Um, cool, cool. That's it for today, and um, I will dive into some more. Let me know any questions and um, stuff you'd like me to look at. I don't want to do a bunch of tech spec stuff, but um, if there's something you think you hear and um, may be relevant, um, let me know, and I'll see if I can find a way to test it and um, see if we can listen to it. Cool, cool.